but it was good for us because we shed that royal blood, not any blood, but a sinless blood. And because of that blood you shed, it is the remission of sin. Because that blood had no sin. The enemy had nothing on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, it's so good when you know that the enemy had nothing on your God. The enemy had nothing on Jesus. We can boast and say, yes, the God we serve is real. Hallelujah. He's not dead, but he's alive. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Since we're going to have a few verses this morning, and uh, I don't know how long our class is going to be this morning, but then we are still in the book of John chapter 3 and verse 13. We'll be going to 14 this morning. I think we have read quite a lot, but... Uh, the true sense of it will be going chapter four, chapter twelve, chapter three and verse fourteen. Fourteen. We may just touch a little piece in thirteen uh, to start our class and move into verse fourteen. Loving Father, I thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up in our right mind. Thank you, Lord, for looking over us throughout the night and for giving your angel charge over us. And this morning we are here to praise you and to magnify your name. We are here, Lord, to send out the world, send out the word to the world that Jesus Christ is alive and well and is still in that saving business. He's still in that healing business. He's still in the delivering business. The God we serve is holy. He's pure. Jesus is righteous, the son of the only begotten son, the only begotten of God, full of grace and truth, one that's full of compassion, and it's full of mercy, and it's grace cannot be outnumbered. Because you have grace upon grace. And that's where we are this morning. Feeding and living on the grace of God. Something that we do not deserve. The Father speak for me and for me this morning. And everyone that I honor my voice this morning. That they would take in the engrafted word of God that it may grow thereby. Help us this morning, Father, and bless us. Help us to quick to hear and slow to speak. And when we speak, we speak the word of God. Help us to be wise, O oh God, and wiser than the, only, the enemy. Bless us today. Again, I ask all in Jesus' name and for thy sake. Amen and amen. amen. Praise God. Again, good morning, saints. It is a good time to be here in the Lord. Amen. And this morning, we'll worship our God. In truth, amen, because the word of God and the Lord is all about truth, amen, and not only truth, but proof of who Jesus really is, and you always say who he is, and always give proof that he is who you say he is, thank God. Now, last week, uh, we touched verse 13, but I think we may have read way up to verse 18, if we did, I believe. But then we look back at verse 13, and he said, And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven even the Son of Man, which is in heaven, present. Amen. Now this morning, 
I'll be speaking about the Omi present Jesus. The Omi present Jesus. The Jesus that is everywhere at the same time. Amen. He's everywhere at the same time. If we understand his word in, in verse 13. He said, I am the very one that came down from heaven. Not another Jesus. The same one that's speaking to you. And the same one that is in heaven. He said, no man made it plain. And no man has ascended up to heaven. But he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, somebody could read from another version and tell us what Jesus is saying. Probably a different word, but the same thing. Yes, it's go ahead. I think mine says the same thing. John chapter 3, verse 13. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is, the Son of Man who is in heaven. Amen. So you see that you have an old King James Version. Or that Pastor Bray have another yeah. version. Pastor Bray, can you read chapter, verse 3 for us, please? Yes. Of chapter it says, 3. Uh, no one has ascended. No one has ascended into heaven except the one who has descended from heaven, the Son of Man. That's it. That's it. Amen. The Son of Man. That's a complete verse, right? Amen. And verse 14. As he said, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Now when I look at verse 13 and 14, I think they go together. Yeah. Jesus was telling plainly as Moses lifted up that serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. In other words, it is a must that the Son of Man will be lifted up. Now, who wants to lift them up? Or who do not want to lift them up? But he'll be lifting up somehow. Amen. Who want to lift him up or who do not want to lift him up? But he will be lifting up somehow. It's a must that he be lifted up because he came for a purpose. Amen. He came to free man. He came to deliver man. He came to heal man. Jesus came to open the eyes of mankind. And one way that will be done and one way it will be done is to lift him up. Now the word for lift up there is the other word for believe. Amen. Or to accept. You have to accept him. You have to believe in him and accept him. Clyde, are you there? As I said earlier on, the omega, the, the, the omnipresent Christ, which is the adjective, the God that can be everywhere at the same time, omnipresence, it is the same person. Amen. This morning, we'll be looking at two things. Or if I would say, 
the benefits of two things. The benefits of believing and the benefits of not believing. Amen. And they both have a reward. There is a, re there is a reward for believing and there's also a reward for not believing. And we will speak about that this morning. Amen. And we will be telling that not only to us, but to the world. That there is a benefit in everything. Now this morning, I, I would want us to read John chapter 3. Okay, we do that already. John chapter 3 and verse 13. Okay, uh, as we move down and we read 14, verse 14. He said, um, you must be lifted up. And as we look down, he said, when we, we must believe, we must believe, when we believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are lifting him up. When we believe in him, we are lifting him up. Now, whether in physical or spiritual, Anyone you believe in, you're lifting them up. Isn't that true? Anyone you believe in, you're lifting them up. Whether it's a physical or spiritual, to believe means to lift up. To believe means to expose. Believe means to receive. Believe means to embrace. Believe means to love. All that have to do with lifting up. As I said last Sunday, uh, when the serpent was lifted up, serpent, the serpent could not do anything for anybody. But while the eyes of the people was on the serpent, the faith was in God. The faith was in God to do what he said he would do when he spoke to Moses because he was the one that told Moses to put that brazen serpent upon that stick and when man look at it, that sting of that serpent that was meant to kill them, they will be healed. Amen. So all they had to do was to believe what Jesus said. To look at that serpent and trust God for a miracle. That's what we have to do today. Is to lift up Jesus and wait for a miracle. For he said... By my stripes, you will heal. Yes. Amen? He said, I did it long ago for you. Long ago, I die, and I take all those sins, uh, even that 47, one, I nail all to the cross. I took the strokes for that, and I bleed for your justification. I, will, I die for your justification. I bleed here yeah, and die for justification. And I took the strokes, at 39 strokes, for your healing. So all you need to do is to believe. You may feel that pain because you're still in the Adamic body, that sinful body. But I did something long ago that if you believe that I did it and what I did was right, just claim it. Amen. This morning, 
Uh, I have two verses that I, we are supposed to quote from since last week. And that one is Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 18. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to verse 18. You're talking about dividends. You're talking about benefits. You're talking about profits. You're talking about gaining. You're talking about riches. He's speaking about power right here in Mark chapter 16, wherever that might just read that. Yes, my sister. R read it. Okay. Mark chapter 16. You want me to hold it or you going to hold it? Okay. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 through 18. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen. That's the power that follow believing. That's the power or the riches or the benefits that follow a born again believer. You know, when people see you walk in the street, sometimes they judge you. Many times they judge you on how you dress or on how you speak. You may have some broken language, speaking not properly, that they will understand. Or you may dress raggedly that they will not like. But I'm talking about a born again believer. Yeah. When you are born again, you are different from the world. Because certain power have extended to you that if, if you use them, you can cause havoc in this world. Amen? So the important thing to know is to know who you are. Amen? A lot of people do not know who they are. But we are not living dead. There are a lot of living dead that walk in the street today. But when you are born again, you are not a living dead. Maybe yesterday he was a living dead, but not today when you're transformed. Amen. We need to preach it and teach it. Yes, my sister. Um, I, I just wanted to share something really quick. When I was unsaved, God let me see something on saved people that was not on unsaved people. Now I know it was the Holy Spirit and life shining on, off of them. They were alive, but everyone else didn't have it. It was it, the spark of life truly is on the believer. And, and, and he, he let me see it as an unsaved person. I kept saying, what is it on them that's not on anybody else? I see it. And uh, I'm so grateful that he gave me a chance to get saved. Thank you. Amen. You know, many times people are born again and find themselves falling in sin and become a carnal Christian. And when you're carnal, you're just like the world or looking or behaving like the world or acting like the world. And that sometimes confuses people that whether you are born again or whether you are lost. There are a lot of people that believe that you can lose your salvation when you turn away from God. 
But when you turn away from God, since you are truly born again, you will return. The Lord will make it possible to bring you back because he has put a brand on you that you no more belong to the devil. Yeah. You are his. And the Lord will go out and find his own in spite of what it costs. Yes, Pastor. Again, uh, I went through a lot of ups and downs, and I did sin it's, 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 at, some, at some point. But uh, God uh, forgave me, and, uh, it, it, and I became a very strong Christian after that. But when I started out, it, it, it was like kind of up and down. And, uh, but I know I was born again, and I love Jesus, but I can't say I didn't sin. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I, 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 I don't, I don't, anybody have, anybody else have something to say about that? You have the mic in your hand, speak. <laughs> yeah. Um, when, when you first get saved, it's like little kids when you first see them learning how to walk. They fall down and get back up, and then by the time they're two, they're running all over the place, but they still fall sometimes. And as they mature, they get better and better. I mean, as an adult, you don't see too many people falling down. So it's the same way in our Christian walk. As we get in our word and God stabilizes us and causes us to grow, we don't fall. We don't make those same mistakes. At least we're not supposed to. <laughs> so, so that's what I wanted to say about um, like when you first get saved. And Amen. When you have some time. Thank you. Uh, there's such a thing as forgiveness. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and God forgave me like he, I believe he has a lot of people oh. who started off like that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, if as a teacher, if I would even see it more clear. Yeah or add something to it. Even when you become mature. Okay, Sister Grandma saying something. Let me stop. Um, you are not alone. We have all been through this. We have gone that way before. And as Sister Rene was saying, as a babe, you have to learn to walk and become strong. When you get stronger, there are lots of people that are grown in age and they fall because you see we are living in a sinful world we are living in we are surrounded by all kinds of distraction and if we don't keep our minds on jesus we are going to go astray it's not that we are saved it's just that we have we we stop loving jesus we stop you know, praying, we stop reading the word, we stop telling people about his love. And of course, all these caterpillars and grasshoppers come and they eat up our joy. But it does not mean that we are not people of God. Once you are saved, we were reading this morning that when Israel had gone astray from God and he sent this, 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 this plague upon them and kill all their crops, but yet, he still remembered that they were his people when they cried and said, Lord, help us. Because if you don't, the, 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 the enemies are going to say unto us, where is our God? And so when, they, when God told them what to do to remedy the situation, they, they cried unto God. They called everybody. Even the one that was um, sucking the breast was not exempt from, the, from, the, from repentance. And after that, God gave them deliverance. He left them a blessing. Their crops grew back. The animals were not dying. They were able to have um, wine to bring into the house of God. So I'm saying, yes, we, we, we reach in a stage sometimes when life doesn't make sense to us. And we think that we were better off dead. But God, in his infinite mercy when he sees we are struggling he yeah. comes and help us and bring us back to him amen. by way of repentance amen 
So, so we understand that part. Yes, I, I particularly me, I feel that everything is growth. That's why we come together to teach and help each other. David's on one step and I'm on another step. Elder Graham is on one step and he's on another. We can learn from each other. Amen. Amen. Also, uh, with a little fasting and a little prayer, we can we can get over this because uh, from what I've what I've been learning, fasting and praying is the way to keep the devil off your off your spirit Amen. And, off, and, and, and away from you. If you just fast and pray, you know, I don't do it as much, but I do it as often as, as I can. Uh, I picked this up from a friend of mine that's also doing the same thing. We we practice praying and trying to get get our lives right. That's all it's about getting getting closer to God. Okay, so then we read uh, 14 and 15, right? Yep. Okay, let's take 16 and 17. Yep, okay. we, I think we have 15, right? 15? Yeah. Okay, let's read 15, 16, and 17. Okay. okay. 15, 16, and 17. Okay. Okay. Um that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. So those three verses tell us something. Amen. We observe in the lesson it's all about believing and nothing much more. Just to believe. Believe with faith. Believe the word of God. Believe he will do what he say he'll do. And believe he is who he say that he is and we'll see our miracle. It may take a little time, but the Lord God is always who he is. Amen. He said that whosoever believe, believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. As I said, lifting him up is believing. To lift him up is to believe and to receive him, according to chapter uh, verse 14. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have eternal or everlasting life. You have no need to perish when you accept him as the Lord and Savior. He will take care of you. Even as a shepherd take care of his sheep, the Lord take care of his own. And they will not perish, but will live forever. But you know, I always love verse 17. Verse 17, when I read verse 16, I always want to read verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So the Lord God is not about condemning. He's about delivering. Man condemn himself. And that's why I had us to pause a little bit when we take 15, 16, and 17. And then, now, we will go into 18 to 20. 18 to 20. You want me to read? Yeah, if you had a mic close to yes, read it. Okay. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed 
in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. Amen. So that's the purpose or the reason of 18, 19, and 20. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. In other words, that the only way one can be free is to believe. And the only one that come down to deliver you, you rejected him. Yes, yes. yes Pastor Bray. So, uh, so we're talking about the importance of believing. Uh, so going back to my situation, when I did sin, I really believed in God. And the belief was in my heart. And uh, I think that's why God forgave me. Well, he, he, he could he could, have forgiven, he yes. could have forgiven me for it in, in, anyway. <laughs> you are truly saved. But uh, so we're talking about the importance of belief. It is extremely believed. God sees into the heart, and he sees whether you believe or not. We, we can't fool God. Amen. Amen. It's like a, it's like a plague that hits a country. And here comes a doctor, the only doctor that have that medicine to heal that plague and yeah. man turn him away. That's what happened. A plague like, like, like even today. Yeah. We have that pandemic yeah. and uh, we have people been crying for the vaccine all the time. Oh, if God would just send a vaccine and that probably would heal the people. But now the vaccine come, people don't want it. And it is so sad, so many people die. And even those on the dying bed, they cried and say, if I only knew, I would have taken it. And those of you that do not take it, I'm urging you, please go and take it. Because that is the only solution. Seen some Instagram? Yeah. You know, I know that one can be here without the vaccine. Because God can heal anyone. We don't have to take any vaccine. But do you believe in God so much that He would heal you? Most of the people don't even believe in God. And they still do not take it. And not only that, by sending the vaccine, by sending the vaccine, many times it is the Lord that gives the scientists or whoever the wisdom to develop it. And you still didn't take it. But then I just got the reference with the pandemic. But as I said long ago, there is a great pandemic that hit the world, the entire world. And in order to be delivered, you must believe. Amen. I said that long ago, long ago. And I think it was in uh, 2011. 
that the Lord God, he stopped that pandemic before it went too far. Amen. And I know a lot of people didn't understand it until that pandemic hit us here. I was not referring to that one. I was referring to the previous one, the main one that brought death upon mankind. And since one pandemic hit the world, others will follow. You better bet me. Every, since one pandemic hit the world, others will follow. Yeah. Because it was before the creation, many years ago, when Adam and Eve fell, they sinned, and they brought that pandemic upon mankind, which is death. But you know the amount of pandemics that happen after that? You can count them on your fingers. It was not only epidemic, it was a lot of pandemic that happened that hit the world. And uh, it was more than a flu, it was a pandemic that killed thousands and millions of people in the, in the 18th century. Yeah, Black Plague. It had one they call, uh, if you name them, uh, the swine flu. Yeah, many, many of them, and they were called pandemic. Now, if we understand what is a pandemic, a pandemic is one that would hit the entire world. An, epi an epidemic is one that may just hit a city or a few people, a few lives. But a pandemic covered the entire world. Yeah. And that happened because of sin. Yeah. The one happened in the Garden of Eden is because of sin. Yeah. And from time sin started, it continued. But Jesus stopped it before it went to fire. You see how he stopped it. God sent his son to die in order to bring back mankind. That man would have a chance to live again. Yeah. You call that life after death, or from paradise lost, paradise regained. Life after death, Jesus brought that through when he died. Now I have something here for us. And it is taken in Luke. Chapter 23, verses 36 to 43. Luke, chapter 23, verses 36 to 43. Whoever has that mic, read it. Or give somebody else who wants to read it. Luke 23, and verses 36 to 43. So we observe what happened in John. Did you, did you read John uh, 3, 18 to 20, right? Because man didn't believe. That's why condemnation come upon him. But Luke chapter 23, somebody read that. Okay. Um, 23, 36 to 43. 23, Luke 23. 36 to 43. Okay, 36. The soldiers also mocked him, coming and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you were king of the Jews, save yourself. And an inscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. 
But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Hallelujah. To 43? Yeah, you ready? Okay. For, okay. 43. Do we get anything from that verse? The verse is there? Do we get anything there? What do we understand in what we read? From, 40, from 36 to 43. Well, Jesus, um, uh, uh, you want me to go ahead and talk? Yeah, but, yeah, because even when I look at verse 35, and the people stood. Oh, the wait. Holy. Yeah, take from 35. Take from 35 and explain 35 to to 43. And the people stood looking on, but even the rulers with them sneered, saying, he saved others, let him save himself. Okay. If he is the Christ, the chosen of God. The soldiers also mocked him, coming and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And an inscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals who hanged, blasph who were hanged blasphemed him saying, if you're the Christ, save yourself and other and us. But the other answering rebuked him saying, do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly for we receive our due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, assuredly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Um, all the people were marking him and it was a lot, just, all this unbelief, but the one thief hanging on the cross, well, it had to be the father that revealed it to him. First of all, he said, Jesus has done nothing, no sin, no crime, and he's hanging on the cross. And then because of his belief, Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. In spite of whatever that man did, because of his belief, Jesus saved him right then and there. Amen, and deliver him. And deliver him. Amen. Now, uh, Thank you. Many times people, we know that people have to believe, believe and baptize to be saved. But the Lord God do things in his own way. You haven't got to go to the water to be saved. All you have to do is to believe. Because to, is to baptize is just an obedience and an outward appearance to show that you are joined into the family of God. That's the purpose of baptism. This man was not able to come down to get baptized before they crucify him, before they kill him. And the Lord, the one that saved, was right in the midst of him. He was right in the middle of the both of them, one to criminals. But one feared God and one did not. The one that did not fear God mocked him and believed since he had the power to save himself. He should save himself and them. But what he did not know, Jesus was dying to save the world. 
He was not dying for himself. He didn't do anything. He was sinless. But he took the sins of the world upon him and died for us. And that's what that criminal did not understand. And today he said, you will be with me in paradise. So what we observe there, before Jesus went down to the grave, he went to heaven. Or while he was on earth, he was in heaven. Yes, it's the Graham. Uh, can, you, can you give it a mic? Let's see. Yeah, um, it, it shows that no matter what you've done in this world, you could be the worst person on the face of the earth, but your faith and belief in the Savior is able to deliver you while people are calling you names. My mother was very good at calling people names, especially men. <laughs> um, I remember um, some, some years back, there was, I'm not sure if it's the Unibomber or if it's somebody else, but they had committed a grievous crime. And on the radio, there were some people having discussion about the, 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 the matter. And one of the guys said, he hoped and he wished that this criminal would not repent so that he could go to hell. And it, at the time, it sounded funny, but when I thought about it, it wasn't funny at all. You know, he was speaking because of the anger he had with him, but our Lord is not like that. You say, if he, he said, if you come to me, I will not cast you out like others um, does. Amen. Offense? That's true. That's true. All you have to do is to believe. Come to him. Tell him your problem. Ask him for mercy. And he'll deliver you. People can call you what they want. They can watch you how they want. It's not them that are doing it. It's God. And that's a problem we have about us. We allow people to look at us, to mock us, to laugh us, and end up ourselves in hell. Instead, the one that can deliver us. Uh, some people, a lot, yes, a lot of people uh, fear God. Some people have an inner, inner God inside of them that lets them know ahead of time before other people say anything. Like the man already knew that was hanging on the other side of the cross. He already knew that Jesus was who he was. He didn't have to. It was already implanted in him when, when the other guy started talking about Oh, so and so and so and he said, wait, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. This man ain't done nothing. This man hasn't done nothing. Not a thing. Okay, it's all right for us to die for what we did, but this guy, this guy hasn't done nothing. So, uh, you know, give him more or less, get off of him. Give him some slack. Let him be who he wants to be and don't worry about, don't worry about him. Worry about yourself. Jesus, Jesus is Jesus. And that's who he, and that's who he was. And the guy knew that. Amen. Just like the guy that was... Uh, the soldier and his kid, and he told him, and he told him his daughter was sick, and he said, Don't worry about it. He said, Because you're, you know, I take, I'm a man of authority. I give, I give out rules and places for people to go. He said, Now, when you come and tell me that my son is healed or my child is healed, all I have to do, all you have to do is say it. I believe it already. That's right. So these, some That's people right. already have that in them. Some people yes. already know who God is, and even though they're sitting on the outside, they know. They know. They know. They believe. I believe that too. Yeah, they know. And that's it, brethren. You know, let me just make one point and then close. Is uh, the Jesus that did nothing and the thief that observed that and tell it. He said, this man have not done anything. But we, what we facing right now, we deserve it because we did something to deserve it. We deserve that punishment. We, we deserve it. So why try to join him together with us? He's innocent. So he realized that and said, you know something? Even while that other guy criticized you, you, when you get 
to paradise, remember me. Remember me, Lord, remember me. And he said, not only that I remember you, but today where I'm going, you'll be there with me. Amen. And that's the message. Let's trust God and depend on him because he's able. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, you are able and you'll do it for us over and over again when we believe. All we have to do is to believe. And that's 